Hello, my name's George English. I'm the director of Research Through People. We made this video for those of you who had ancestors from Glasgow and the surrounding area, a very interesting part of the world and where history really affected the way our ancestors like lived their lives. So we want to particularly focus on that in this, the various different things that have happened over the years that may have affected our, our ancestors. Now, know your history. Now, this is Scotland, and of course, Glasgow was affected by the things that affected Scotland. There were the Highland Clearances in the late 18th century. A lot of Scots went abroad from then, but some came to Glasgow. Very, very big effect on Glasgow was the Industrial Revolution, and we'll say more about that in due course. People came from the country to cities like and towns like Glasgow. Uh, the Great Famine of Ireland in the mid 1850s. A lot of Irish people went round the world, but a lot came to the west of Scotland in particular and to Glasgow. And then the British Empire. In fact, Glasgow would grow to become the second city of empire and was a very big factor in the growth that Glasgow experienced. So let's look at Glasgow. The River Clyde, a very key part of Glasgow, and the Act of Union that, that uh, Scotland joined England and Wales in 1707. They joined, providing they got access to the English colonial markets, and it was an immediate success. Uh, in Glasgow, they talk about the tobacco lords, um, who made a lot of money out of bringing the tobacco back from uh, America. Now, if you know Glasgow, here is the Museum of Modern Art, but it was originally one of the houses of one of the tobacco lords. Look at the extravagant Roman columns and so on that he was able to build. In front of that is the statue of the Duke of Wellington. It's become almost tradition now that he has to have a traffic cone as a hat, <laughs> as you can see. So Glasgow experienced immediate growth with the Act of Union. And then the tremendous bonus of the Industrial Revolution came in the mid 1800s and onwards, mid 1700s, I beg your pardon. And a very key factor, originally big ships could not get up the Clyde. They tended to go to Greenock and places. But in 1774, the Clyde was dredged and so ships could come all the way up to Glasgow. And typically the uh, ports on the west side of Britain, in Liverpool and Bristol as well, did very well because they were able to get more quickly to the Atlantic Ocean, Americas and other parts of the world. And the United Kingdom, by 1850, had become the world's most successful economic union. They had more than 40% of the total world's industrial capacity, and that was fantastic. Glasgow contributed a lot to that and benefited tremendously to become the second city of empire. And look at its population. It went up by more than 50 times between 1700 and 1900. 13,000 in 1700, three quarters of a million by 1900. As we look at a map of Glasgow, here we are at the end of the 1700s. Um, there's the River Clyde, the city of Glasgow on the north side of the River Clyde. Now, Govan Parish, south of the river, there was hardly anything, any housing at all. What a contrast with now. So what I'm gonna do is look at one or two of the people that we actually did research for. There's the population figures at the bottom. And here was the Macmillan family. What we find quite typically is a family lives somewhere in Glasgow, but then they marry people, perhaps from close by, obviously, other parts. They may move around within Glasgow. And so here we are, for instance, you can see the M8, which goes from west to east to, to Edinburgh. <clears throat> Built now, obviously not there in the past. Here is the main city that many locals will be familiar with. There's the river. And here on the south side is what was Govan. Now, you can see that here the Macmillans lived in Anderston, not too far from the city, Tradeston on the south side of the river, uh, Hutchison Town, now the Gorbals were the slums that developed um, as Glasgow expanded and so rapidly. And then they were also on the west side, Partick, there we are, Govan, um, very much renowned for shipbuilding and things. Pollock Shield's quite a nice area to the south. <clears throat> so here the Macmillan family, and we believe walking in your fa families ancestors footsteps is a tremendous thing to do so what the things we do in our reports is put in maps like this so people can go and do just that 
Here, more specifically, the Barr and Wallace families, and here we put the streets that they lived in, and in fact, from the report, there's the actual address, if it's known. And here we are again, just south of the river. Uh, here's Govan. Um, here's various streets that uh, would be known to people who were from that sort of area. Um, Tradeston, I mentioned earlier on, so that these people particularly um, lived on the south side of the river, and in fact, they were very much connected with the shipbuilding industry and the industries that went with that. Now, one of the factors in Ireland is maybe the First World War. Now, what's interesting is big cities like Glasgow had some of their own battalions. Glasgow, in fact, had three city battalions. I'm just going to a quick example of someone who was affected by that. The Glasgow tramways had their own battalion. Uh, here's one of the old Glasgow trams. And Samuel Southgate was someone who was killed in the, sec in the First World War in 1917. Um, now, interesting enough, there was a whole story there. He was actually illegitimate. We found his mother's marriage, supposedly, or marriage in 1887, but he was actually born a couple of years earlier, um, and there's his 1885 birth. Now, he joined the Highland Light Infantry, and um, <clears throat> they, as I say, were part of the Tramways Battalion. He was killed, and there's a lovely museum, the Riverside Museum in Glasgow, which is really the transport museum. And there they've got the Highland Light Infantry Tramways Memorial. And we found that Samuel Southgate is on that memorial for the family. Now, another factor is mining. What happened with all the industries that grew, the shipbuilding and so on, they needed raw materials. So coal was vital to drive the machines. And here you can see the Scottish coal fields in Glasgow are very much prominent in that sort of thing. Um, that would do also use of iron and steel to, to melt that. The goods going around the world needed to be shipped, so shipbuilding became a very key part of Glasgow's growth. And our ancestors lived through these times and worked in these industries. Now, another big factor I mentioned earlier on was a great family in Ireland. Tragic. Mass starvation. A population of seven million, a million of them died from starvation. Another million emigrated, and many of those came to the west of Scotland. The cause was potato blight. They had one foodstuff, the potato, so the blight just uh, took away their, their, their livelihood, their living, basically. And there are also political and other factors, but a lot of them came to Glasgow, and a lot of people have Irish ancestors. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you want to get in touch, you want us to help you look at your Glasgow or other ancestors, please feel free. Now we're coming up to Christmas, so one of the things you could do is actually give a voucher to one of your nearest and dearest. Uh, wife, husband, children, we've got someone who's giving his son-in-law uh, a gift of a report. So please feel free to get in touch, there are contact details, we give a free consultation so we can advise you on what we would recommend we do on your behalf. So thanks very much, I hope you found that